What is going on YouTube? I am back again with another video. It is Bryce Builds It All, your favorite AMP IA and Part 147 instructor here. And we are beginning the JPI EDM 900 install. In the last video, I unboxed everything to see what I had. In this video, I will actually begin installing it. So first thing is first, I need to get the cowling off, but y'all have seen me take the cowling off a dozen times, so I won't bore you with it. The goal for today, of course, is going to be disassembly. Get as much of the aircraft taken apart as I possibly can, as quickly as I can, so that I can obviously start putting the new stuff in. So first thing I'm gonna do is get all the scat tubing off. You'd be surprised how much room you will open up in the cowling just by removing scat tubing. I've already taken photos of everything. Uh, the parts catalogs and whatnot aren't very good for this aircraft, so pro tip. Take a lot of photos of things as you disassemble it. It will make going back together 10 times easier. Again, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and get these seats out so they are not in the way. Just like that, they are out and they are out of the way. So now what I will do, sorry, there's an airplane over there running on the ramp. I'm gonna go ahead and get the glove box door off. I'll probably go ahead and get the glove box out because that's gonna be in the way. I may or may not um, take this yoke off. I don't think I'll take it all the way off, uh, but I'll take it loose so that I can sort of get it out so I can get the plastic all the way out. I'm gonna be doing a lot of work up here. Um, so I might just slide the yoke out and then slide it back in after I get that done. So let's get this next. So one of the questions I've gotten from my clients and, and people in the past is like, they'll say often like, you're really good or that was a pain. How did you do that so quickly? And the, the answer is like, it just, it's, it sucks. It, it's gonna suck. So just get in there and get it over with. I mean, find a technique, find some way of doing it that works and just, and just get it done. I mean, like I took this out with a screwdriver, but a lot of times to put it in, there's no space here. So you end up having to put um, a bit driver or a, a bit from a, a screw gun into a quarter inch wrench and like actually tightening them down a, a, a little turn at a time with a quarter inch wrench, but it's the only way to do it. So embrace the suck and get it done. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like this. Um, I might put the bolt back in this, but I want to leave this out um, sort of off to the side. I'll just set it over here for now. Um, I don't feel the need to disconnect any of that just yet, um, but that way now I can get all of these primary engine instruments out of the way. The flap gauge is going to have to stay, but everything else uh, for the moment can come out, including both of the Hobbs meters, all the fuel gauges, this can all come out. I will tape, uh, again, take lots of photos, um, but I'll use some tape and tape up what is what so that I don't get confused later when I am trying to put things back together. All right, so I'll show you what I'm dealing with uh, back here. This is basically all of my connections and everything for the, uh, for the old original gauges um, right back up here. And then I got my 
old tachometer and all that other stuff. I'm honestly just going to rip it out. Um, I am going to save it all though. And this is uh, my point here. There's good money in these old gauges. Well, maybe not good money, but there is some money in these old gauges, that oil, that old oil temp gauge, that old oil pressure gauge. Somebody may need those things. So don't just rip shit apart and break it. You know, try to save as much of the stuff as you can. Um, when you, if you ever elect to do one of these installs, you might be able to save it and get a, even if it's just a hundred dollars, you get something back. But another benefit, like you're going to have existing holes in the firewall for your old oil temperature probe, as well as your old tachometer. So you're not gonna have to drill a bunch more holes in there when you do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw you guys on a time-lapse for the rest of the video. And I'm gonna go ahead and get all that stuff out and then I will see y'all in the outro. So there you go, everyone. I'm probably going to see you guys out here, but I got everything taken out, which means I can now put the unit in, which I'm actually going to probably put the unit in towards the end, but I'll, let me get it set in place. All right. So it's obviously, it's not bolted in place yet, um, but I'm thinking I'm probably going to put it there. I'm going to have to see if I can find a blank plastic. So something that has none of the plastic cutouts or anything in it. If not, um... I might just end up making a piece of aluminum to cover all of it, but I don't think that will look as good as a factory original piece of metal. So anyways, we'll figure that out, but that will basically replace the entire top stack up here. And it's gonna give us several more indications that we didn't have before, like carb temperature, cause it has actually had issues with carb ice and whatnot in the past. But like I said, if you look forward to watching this, make sure you stick around. Um, for many weekends to come, it hopefully it doesn't take me too, too long. Uh, I think the calibration is probably going to be the longest part of this. So as always, leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, um, join the discord, follow me on Instagram, all of that good stuff. And as always go build something and be easy.